Ladies and gentlemen, this is an article that came out on Gizmodo, November 9th, 2018. You know about flu season, but did you know about gonorrhea season? You know, I'm hearing these strains of uh, gonorrhea are now very drug resistant. Like clockwork, the influenza virus rears its ugly head every winter and makes our lives miserable. But the flu isn't the only germ that likes a particular time of year. According to a new paper published this week in PLO's Pathogens, seemingly every infectious disease, including polio, gonorrhea, and even HIV is seasonal, though not always for the same reason. In recent years, Michaela Martinez, an infectious disease ecologist at the Columbia University Department of Environmental Health Sciences, had become especially interested in understanding when certain diseases strike. It was a fascination that began with her work on childhood ailments that tend to show up as seasonal epidemics like measles, chickenpox, and polio. What I was finding is that there's no particular time of the year where all diseases are prevalent and a time of the year when they're all gone. For each infectious disease, there's a time of the year for that infection and every infection has its own season, Martinez told Gizmodo. And for some diseases where the outbreaks are really explosive, you can almost set a calendar by them. Indeed, in her latest paper, Martinez found a seasonal pattern for every infectious disease she was able to dig up any relevant research on. The list of diseases in her calendar, 69, in total includes those caused by parasites. Okay, so, well, actually that kind of makes sense. You know, the parasites being active during certain periods of time. Okay, so she's talking about the parasites that cause um, like Lyme disease, viral diseases, chicken pox, Martinez also look at acute infections that usually last for a short while, like the flu and chronic infections that remain hidden for years without causing symptoms like hepatitis B and C. The reasons for a disease timing are more obvious in some cases than in others. Lyme, for instance, is spread by a female tick bite particularly from ticks that are in the immature or nymph stage of their life cycle. And in the U.S., teen ticks begin to show up in mass around the summertime, which is also peak Lyme uh, season. Yeah, you know, I, I know, I know a few people that I worked with that had Lyme disease for flu. The winter weather usually keeps the air dry and cold, which helps the virus stay alive longer and might even lower our natural defenses against it. But for other diseases, there's still a lot we don't know um, about why they're seasonal. Martinez originally tended to look at acute infections, expecting that seasonality wouldn't be seen in chronic infections. Someone in uh, like someone with genital herpes, for example, isn't sick all the time. Instead, their symptoms seem to come and go at random. 
depending on how active the germ is inside their body. But when Martinez expanded her research, she was surprised that even these infections all had their own seasonal clock, with herpes symptoms seem to be more common in the spring. One chronic infection highlighted by uh, Martinez is shingles, caused by the same virus responsible for chickenpox. The virus behind shingles hides out in our nervous cells after we get better from chickenpox. And it's only decades later that it reemerges, causing the painful disease. These new cases seem to cluster around late spring and summer. And past research by Martinez and others has suggested that the climate itself, particularly the amount of sunshine, might help resurrect the virus within nerve cells. It could be the UV exposure essentially suppresses the localized immunity, but would generally keep the virus in check inside these neurons, she said. On the other hand, it might be something else entirely about the spring and summer that affects our body's defenses against the virus. Martinez hopes her paper will spark more interest in answering these and other questions as well as in exploring seasonality as a key aspect of infectious disease in general. For many germs, there's surprisingly little to nothing we know about when they peak and why. And most of the time, the research we do have only focuses on a specific part of the world, which can skew the picture. In the case of the flu, for instance, it hits in the North Hemisphere in the fall and winter, but the cooler areas of the Southern Hemisphere in the spring and summer. That knowledge aside from helping someone plan out the world's worst beefcake calendar could have major public health implications. With herpes, for example, antivirals can shorten the length of symptoms and reduce the risk of transmission during someone's active outbreak. So it might be worthwhile for doctors to have a large, a larger stock of medicine during a peak season. Polio, on the other hand, is close to being eradicated globally. Yeah, not according to what we're seeing here with the AFM. Thanks to mass vaccination programs. No, vaccines do not get rid of anything, y'all. Everything they claim they eradicated is still here. We're still seeing the same things. I mean, look, we're still seeing measles outbreaks. And I did a story about a year ago where a college campus was having a mumps outbreak. I mean, those things they claim were eradicated and we're still seeing outbreaks. All over the all over the globe, really. Okay, but getting rid of these preventable diseases could be easier if we knew exactly when to vaccinate a particular spot of the world. Okay, yeah, I, I mean, I see what she's saying, but the bottom line is nothing is eradicated. Everything they claim is eradicated, ladies and gentlemen. We're seeing the same diseases popping up. It all boils down to having the information to get smarter about how to treat infections, especially for the chronic ones, and how to prevent epidemics from the acute infections, Martinez says. Well, we are seeing so many things pop up and I'm still seeing the flu deaths in the news. Now, they're claiming the vaccines work, but if you remember last year, the flu vaccine they get uh, gave out to everybody didn't even cover that strain of flu. 
So each year it's really like hit or miss on these flu vaccines. They're not foolproof, but you know, they tell you to get them anyway, although it was not even protecting you against the flu strain. So, you know, we're seeing the AFM, the polio-like um, symptoms occur in primarily children and gonorrhea. And they're seeing uh, the strain of, um, and like I said in, in the beginning of gonorrhea, they're now so strong, they're not even responding to the antibiotics anymore. So... There you go. And, you know, and I saw an outbreak of chicken pox recently, and we know the measles is, I think they have um, 41,000 cases across Europe. So, uh, yeah, it's a pretty bad season this year. It's definitely ramped up. But please tell me what you think, ladies and gentlemen. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell, and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.